Yes, we, we are going to just do the formalities. Advocate uh, Nelly is going to do the formalities with you and then Mr. Sandile July is going to lead you on your, on your affidavit. Advocate Nelly. Thank you, Chair. Afternoon, Mr. Bosman. Afternoon, afternoon, sis. Are you going to take an oath or are you going to affirm? Yeah, I'll take an oath. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lungile Bosman, do you swear that the evidence you're about to give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If that is so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So I God. Thank you very much. You've now been sworn in as a participant in the SJN hearings. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. July. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bosman, you uh, made an affidavit. And that yes. affidavit is in front of you. And that affidavit, it's not signed. It is signed. No, sorry, sorry. It's signed, but it's not commissioned. It is commissioned. The one I've got. Oh, OK. Yeah, it is commissioned. Oh, it is commissioned. No, I've got a copy which is not commissioned. Then that's fine. I've been provided with a copy which is commissioned. Yes. So. Then, in your affidavit is structured in the following manner. You state, you give your background, where you were born, in Kimberley. And then you talk about the unfair treatment and financial loss. And in doing so, you, you, you mention the teams or clubs that you played for, which is Free State Eagles, and nights, right? Yes. And, and then you talk about the 2007 World Cup, which is where the financial loss and unfair treatment was meted against you. You also talk about the 2010 World Cup. And then you talk about protein training camp in yes. Hermanas. Yes, in Atlanta, yeah. Yes. Then you talk about the coaching Northern Cape Provincial Team. Yes. And you finish by your conclusion remarks. Yes, sir. Yes. So it's your opportunity then to go through the affidavit, give us the details of each and every topic that I've just mentioned. Yes, you can proceed. Yeah, uh, firstly, I want to I wanna thank everyone for the for everyone involved uh, for this platform. Uh, my name is uh, Lungile Lutz Bosman. I was born and bred in Kimberley and um, matriculated at Kimberley High in, Kim in Kimberley. Um, my cricketing career started at a young age in Kimberley Township called uh, Kalishiwe under the guidance of my grandparents. Um, I think uh, uh, there's something that I mentioned in my affidavit that uh, if, if I can recall very well, uh, myself and, and, and Funeko and Funeko are the only uh, former former proteas who refused scholarships from uh, from uh, from white schools and matriculated at um, at black schools. And I'm sure Funeko has his own reason why why he did that, and I also have my own reasons why I did that. Yeah, I was a I was a top order top order right-handed batsman, and uh, I played domestic cricket for Cricket and West Free State. Dolphins, and uh, in fact, I, 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 bowled, I, I started my career as a bowler, 
as a bowler, I remember I remember the making my debut in '97 as a as an opening bowler against Natal, and uh, that's how things change. But I started my uh, eventually when when my career uh, went, I started uh, betting, betting, and uh, and I scored the first uh, century in the Standard Bank Pro 20 uh, series in 2004, 2004-2005 season. Yeah, I think basically that's, uh, that, that, that's me in terms of uh, my background. Yeah. You can proceed to the unfair treatment and the financial loss. Yes, yes. I, I, I just wanted to talk, to start, start with uh, with um, with my time at the at the night at the night. That time it was it was still the, the Free State Eagles. It was called the Eagles. Obviously now it's called the Night. And uh, uh, after doing so well for the for the for the. For the, for the Eagles, because uh, let, let me start, let me, let me put it this way. Originally from Kim, I started in Kimberley, and when the system changed those years, I signed for for Eagles. Eagles was a free state team. Aside for the Eagles, I moved to from Kimberley. I moved to Bloemfontein, and uh, that's where everything started. And we had a good. Uh, I think that at the time, Corey, Corey Fancel was a coach. Corey Fancel was a coach, and Saro Celis was his, uh, was his assistant. I think Saro Celis is the one that uh, Tandy spoke about other other day. And uh, we, Corey assembled a good good team that uh, that had the Rogers, the Rogers, the Van der Vaats, the Buta Depenas, all those guys. And uh, what happened uh, to me? Was very sad at Free State because I was part of a good good team that won a lot of trophies, and uh, everything started during a game. I, I think it was a it was a live game. It was a TV game when we played the dol the Dolphins. When I injured my I damaged my my, my knee ligaments, and uh, what 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 happened is that uh, what happened is that. The, the medical team decided on on the day that uh, that I wasn't even away that uh, that I'm, I'm going for for an, for, an oper, for an operation the the following day. I just heard uh, that I'll be operated today and all that while I was in, in the hospital after the whole injury now. And uh, after the whole op, 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 after the whole surgery. I came came back came back to 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 to, to, the, to the to the Eagles, and uh, I went through obviously the, the rehab. You go through the rehab after the injury. You go through. I went through the rehab with a with a with a physio who was uh, Danny Alda at the time, who was based on the at the field. And uh, and while while I went through the rehab for a couple of weeks, uh, two months, three months, I was called in for a contract meeting just to discuss my contract. And uh, during the meeting, I was told that uh, I haven't done enough enough work with my rehab and uh, I needed to put more. But uh, unfortunately, they won't be renewing my contract. I mean, to my surprise, I couldn't. I couldn't understand how can these guys say, say, I didn't put put work on my rehab and all that, whereby our physio was based at the ground. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't attend any sessions, how 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 come I was at the ground? So, so I could. I I I I I, I, I got the physio involved. I spoke to Tony Alda to to get involved with the with the meetings, 
And she, 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 told, she, she told the, the, the free state management at the time that, uh, listen, we had sessions. I mean, we had sessions and she can prove it that, uh, that uh, we did some work on, the, on my knee. And, uh, and there's no way that they can say that I never, I never did my sessions or I missed sessions because uh, I was there all the time. So, so if, if eventually, then uh, I lost my contract at, at, at Free State because of this situation. And uh, I, I couldn't understand how can I lose my contract because of I was, I was so successful. My, I mean, if you can look at my stats those years for Free State, I did quite well, well for them. And now I won trophies. As a team, obviously, we won trophies, and uh, we were very, we were very successful, successful team. Yeah, and, and what what uh, what was funny with this whole whole uh, decision of of, uh, of the free state management was uh, was uh, when I when I called my agent at that time, which was uh, Stan Matthews. Then explain to them exactly. I mean, you guys signed signed words from 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 Kimberley, from Greenland and West, and he did well for you guys. I mean, he put everything on the table, he stayed, and uh, and he, he did well. He did his job on uh, in terms of uh, of uh, of performing on the field, and and he, he proved to you guys that he did his work. He, he called in the. the the, the, the first year which came to to, 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 to talk on, on his behalf and uh, it, it was actually said that uh, I, lo I lost my contract at request and and only to find out that uh, the, the, the the guy who did the oper operation didn't do, didn't do, do a great job in terms of my operation and uh, we and then we only found it out at the later stage when when they already decided no listen we we will be parting ways so so out of my own account i went to to cape town i, moved, I went to cape town for a second opinion that's where the the guy who do who did my op told me listen whoever did your op didn't do the right thing and uh, but I can assist you. I can assist you in terms of another operation to fix whatever mess that was done on your knee. And I think I spent, I spent two days in, 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 Cape, in Cape Town. And the third, the third day, the third day, I uh, I had an op. And uh, after the op, the operation, it took me four. Two, uh, not, not even two weeks. Then I started running, doing doing my rehab and all that, and I started playing again. And I just felt I, I, I done in terms of uh, of how of how I was uh, how, how the free management uh, handled the whole thing in terms of uh, of of uh, of not renewing my contract. And I just I just felt hard done. Mr. Bosman. When the Free State Eagles told you that they won't be renewing your contract? It was the CEO, I think he's the current CEO, CEO Mr. Yishar, Johan van Yerden. Yes. And so now when the physiotherapist advises them that you have been doing your, your rehab and you have been working on your knee to get back on track, what did they say? Yeah, what, when she explained to them exactly that, listen, the guy was here. He never missed one se physio session. Mm. And, uh, you know, those guys just, they just shake their heads. Yeah, yeah, mar, mar, yeah, mar, 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 mar. Mm. Do you understand? So in Afrikaans, yeah, mar. So, 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 so that's was now that's what I said in in Afrikaans. And uh, 
poor physio, she couldn't do nothing. I mean, she tried, she tried, and uh, she also felt that you no, know, it was very, it was very unfair, and um, and she felt, actually felt sad. She was, she cried that she couldn't do nothing for me, because because she's the one who was working with me. I mean, we worked together, together. We we spent a lot of time on my rear. And then uh, just before you move on to the next sesh, uh, section, did you take it up with anyone else outside of the franchise, um, the, the decision not to renew your contract? Yeah, I spoke, I spoke to, some, I spoke to some, some, some guys, but they couldn't do nothing. They couldn't do nothing, and, uh, and uh, my agent tried. He tried, but... Um, <laughs> But uh, those guys in the free state are not the easiest. They're not the easiest people to deal with. And, uh, and it, it was actually said because the, 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 the Corey Fancel, who was the coach at that time, I think that year was also, he was leaving the free state, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he was leaving the free state at that time. So, um, so they, they just couldn't do anything. Because I also spoke to Corey. I tried to explain to him, and and he told me that, listen, I'll speak to you on them, and nothing happened. OK, you can then proceed uh, to the 2007 World Cup. Yes, can I? OK. Yeah. To, can I proceed with the 2007 World Cup? Yes. Yeah, uh, 2007, 2007 uh, World Cup, um, I was uh, part of a squad. I, I was picked for to represent uh, the country for, the, for that World Cup. But what happened is that before then, we, we taught Zimbabwe. We taught Zimbabwe just for for warm up games, and uh, and we played uh, we played about we played about three warm up games against Zimbabwe. What happened is that uh, I was feeling at the boundary and I chased the ball. I hit the, the advertising boards, and I hurt my back. I hurt my back, and uh, and. Uh, Obviously, I couldn't. I couldn't stand up. I, I was literally struggling with my back, so I was taken off the field, off the field, and uh, flown back home the next the next morning. The next, yeah, I think it was the next morning, not that evening. The next morning, I, I was flown back home. I think uh, I was taken straight to to Linksfield Hospital, where I spent the whole the whole day. The whole day until the, the medical team came and uh, they assessed me. And the same, the following, the, I spent a day, a day and a half. Then I left. Then I went back to the hotel. And at the hotel, I had to wait for the team to come back. To come back from Zimbabwe. When the team came back from Zimbabwe. Uh, the, 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 the person who was a, uh, the medical guy, I, I, I don't recall his name at that time, said we should wait for, 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 for the management, for the Proteus management to, to arrive, to arrive before he, he, he gives me all the details of uh, how serious is the injury, but I need to take it easy for, uh, take, take it easy for a few days. And, uh, after, Two days when the team arrived, then Mickey Mickey Arthur, the what, Mickey Arthur was a coach at that time, called me in to to explain, to explain the the whole report from uh, from our team, our uh, medical guy. Uh, he told me that uh, lesson was uh, um, you hurt your back, you hurt your back, and uh, you won't be able to. To, to partake in the World Cup anymore. But then at the time I was, I, I felt much better, man. I was felt much better. 
and uh, I just fell about stuff. But then, uh, then I tried to to explain explain to them that listen, I'm fe I'm feeling I feel much better now. I can move. I can, I can I can walk. And but and they could see that yes, there was a lot of improvement. Then uh, then they decided listen, we'll take another day. Let's take another day or or, or or two to see what happens. Then we'll sit down again and talk regarding this whole whole issue. Then the the, the the day, uh, the two day passed. The, the, the following day, the following day, uh, I was I was calling again, and then Mickey told me that uh, listen, this is an issue again. We have to decide now. We have we have to take a decision. Then I told him, nah, okay, it's fine, Mickey. You can we 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 can talk. So what what what's what's happening now? Because I feel much better. I can move around. You know, each day I've, I kept feel, feeling better, and uh, and and uh, and I told I I told I, I told Mickey, listen, uh, Mickey. No, before before that before that before that before that sorry I forgot this before that um, I was communicating with uh, with Andrew. Andrew Hall and his wife. Andrew, Andrew was, was also in the team, was also in the team from, uh, Andrew Hall was from Joburg. And Andrew Hall uh, referred me, they both referred me, him and the wife. I, I think the wife wasn't, uh, she was a runner or something. And uh, they referred me to specialists, to two, three, three specialists from Joburg. And before the meeting with Mickey, I went to go and see the specialist just for a second opinion. Then I went to, to, to see those guys and uh, they assessed me. The first uh, 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 specialist assessed me and then uh, he took some tests and all that. He wrote a report. In the, in, uh, in the afternoon, I went to, to another specialist, took the report and everything, fine. Then I took the, both reports. Both reports to to Mickey and uh, our medical guy, our, our medical guy, and uh, I told him, "Listen, I've been cleared to to play, but now they couldn't understand how come you you had cleared so quickly." Then I told him, "No, uh, but I'm fine." And uh, then Mickey said, uh, "Okay, but then you need to prove it." Then I told him, "No." Here's a proof. I mean, I went to go. I went for a second opinion. I uh, went to go and see two specialists, and uh, and I'm clear to 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 start um, to start practicing. So Mickey said, "No, uh, no, but let's. We have to take it easy with this." And I told him, well, "Okay, can we? I think we played. We had two warm-up games. Two warm-up games." Uh, to play in 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 a space of uh, of three days, and then Mickey said, "Okay, what will happen is that we'll give you an opportunity to prove your fitness against uh, against Sri Lanka." Then I said, "It's fine. I'm happy with that. If it happens that uh, I'm more funny or I'm I'm struggling in terms of my fitness levels, or you can see that I'm battling." With, with with my back, I can't run or whatsoever or whatever. Then, then you can let me go. You can send me home. And uh, then he, Mickey agreed. He said, "No, it's fine. I'm happy with that." And uh, and the medical guy said, "It's fine." But uh, but the medical guy didn't say much because it was I mean just Mickey's call also. Do you understand? To to say to say it's fine or not. Then Mickey said, "No, it's fine. We'll take, uh, we'll give you an opportunity to to prove your fitness against Sri Lanka." That evening, that evening, the the the, the manager came to me and uh, and told me that I'm flying home the next day. And the game, the match now, the Sri Lanka match is tomorrow. And now here comes the manager telling me that, uh, "Listen, Lord, you're flying back home tomorrow." So now I'm thinking, I'm flying back home. What do you mean, Mr. G, that I'm flying back home? He said, no, um, 
uh, Mickey decided that uh, you're going back home. But then I, I went back to Mickey to, to, to ask him, listen, listen, Mickey, what, what's the story here? Mm. Then Mickey said, no, let's, uh, I, I can't do anything. We just have to let you go, and, uh, and that's it. But then I couldn't understand, how can you let me go? And uh, you promised me, you, you assured me that you'll give me the opportunity to prove my fitness. Then, then he just he just walked away. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, then I started speaking to people. I I, I spoke to. I remember, I also spoke to to Mr. Majola at the time to tell him about this the story and all that. And then he said, "No, he will speak to Mickey." And but the next day, I went again to Mickey to and speak to him because you need to remember. Uh, I had a good relationship with Mickey because I played with him at Greek Island West those years. He was, uh, he, was uh, he was a player, but I was still young. I was probably the youngest team member in, in, in the team those years in, in, uh, in 1997, when I made my debut. Yeah, I played with Mickey, and, uh, and I knew him. I knew his family and all that, and his dad. So we, we had this good relationship. So I went, I went to him again to, 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 exp, to explain to him, listen, Mickey, why, are you, why did you make, change your decision? That, that you said, uh, it's fine, I can prove myself on the field against Sri Lanka and you're changing. And then eventually I, I, left, I left the camp. I left the camp and uh, obviously the next day, there was there were a lot of media there outside outside the hotel, and uh, and no, I, t I told him I told him the the, the media guy that uh, I'm going back home because of this issue. I had proof, and uh, I, I was told to that I can leave with my proof, and uh, because I want because no one was interested. Mickey wasn't interested. I mean, purely. She, he, he, he just lied to me because uh, because he didn't he didn't honor his work. He just told me that lesson lesson was we can't change our decision anymore. I just I felt I felt very 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 hard done and um, and it, it was a tough tough decision to take because because. Uh, you know, I had, I had so many endorsements. I, had, uh, I, 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 so that it was just, it was just too, too, too tough to take. Mm. Yeah, and uh, oh, and what, what happened is that uh, after the whole media thing, I was. Uh, there was a massive article on the newspaper that I, uh, that I called Mickey a liar and all that, and and I was called in, called in. I went through uh, 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 DC, and I was fined. I was fi I wasn't fined. No, no, I, I was suspended. I got a one match suspe suspension, and I was told that if I uh, say anything again, I will be fined uh, financially. Who called you in um, for the disciplinary hearing? Excuse me. I'm asking who who called you in into the the disciplinary oh. hearing. Who called who called me in after yeah. the? No, it was a, the, the 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 guys were the CSA uh, uh, DC mm. DC committee. So was it the CSA DC committee that made the decision to suspend you for one game? For one game, yes. Okay. Do you think your treatment had anything to do with you being black? Yeah. Do, 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 do you know what? Uh, uh, yes. Because, because what was funny is that I was a top-order batsman, 
and I was replaced by a bowler, a white bowler. And I couldn't understand these guys in terms of 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 of, of, uh, of openers and. You understand? I I knew that. Listen, if I was going to get dropped, obviously you have to pick a a a, a, a bowler. A, a, sorry, a batsman, a top order batsman. But now, now here comes a a, a bowler, and uh, now I'm thinking, what's happening here? And uh, at a at, at a later at, at the later stage, uh, I heard uh, that uh, the team wasn't balanced. The team wasn't balanced, and uh, and uh, the selection panel made a mistake. So I didn't want to get involved. I, di I didn't tell Mickey about about that. I just kept quiet because the person who was also uh, in uh, in management told me, "Please don't mention my name and all that." But the team wasn't uh, wasn't a balanced team, so. So they had to, to let you go. In what and way was said, it uh, not balanced? In what way was the team not balanced? No, you, I, I think there was a, 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 a bowler shot, a front line bowler shot. Okay. So in conclusion, you are saying you were asked to go home when you were, you were ready and fit to play. And you were replaced with this bowler who happened to be white. Yeah. Mm. So returning yes. you home was just an excuse to say you were not fit. Yes, it was just an excuse because I couldn't, fi I couldn't understand Mickey. How can, he say, how can he say it's fine? I'll go through. Uh, I'll play the warm-up game, mm. and if there's any discomfort, then they would withdraw me from the squad. And I, I was happy with it. I was so happy with it, with the decision, with what he said, and and I couldn't wait for the next day. I knew exactly, and when I was communi I communicated with my family that listen, this is a situation. I'm going to get. I'm going. I'll be playing tomorrow, and I'm so excited that. Mm -hmm. I can now just close this this thing of um, of me being injured that I can't take part. I, I'm just happy, and uh, I actually even that, that, that night I thank Andrew and his wife for referring me to the to the right people. And <laughs> I get I guess when when I, so, someone somewhere probably said no, you can't you can't let him play the game. Obviously, if he wants to play the game, that means he's not injured. He's he's, uh, he's fit to play. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Mr. Postman. If you could carry on, you can go to the next topic. 2010. The World Cup. World Cup. Yeah, the 2010 Cricket World, uh, World Cup uh, in the West Indies. I think I was listening to to Roger the other day when he, when he was uh, talking about um, about what 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 happened there. Uh, uh, I must say he was one of the, one of the, one of the guys that 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 made things easier for us, easier for us uh, as in the black players because he was one vocal guy who could when he talks to uh, the, the the guys listen and all that especially when it comes to to race. So uh, so you know, the environment there was just bad. It was just bad because. Most of the time, you the guys don't greet you. You go into a room. Mm. The guy will just look look at you into a dressing room. They just look at you. You have, you have to greet. So you could, but you could see that these guys they're not they're not even they don't even care that you 
you greeting. They they just look, they just literally look that way. And and uh, and they, they made you feel as if you you, know, you don't belong there. Mm. You know you you know you're not part of the squad. You you are not accommodating you. It's like you f they make you feel that you are being accommodated. Yes, yes, they make you feel like that, and uh, and, and because mo most of the mo most of the time they they, they were such a good, most of the time of of, of of the time we were doing drinks, we were carrying drinks, so mm. you could see when when you pick when you go and take something, for instance, if someone is betting and someone needs love, you have to rush to the dressing room. Or to go and grab someone's gloves or what, or, or or something, then all of a sudden you just walk into them while they, they are talking, and and when when you get there and you hear things that they are talking, yeah, it, it was it was sad, it was sad because all of a sudden you you just feel that that uh, this environment is it's it's not healthy. There was a uh, there was a time when. Uh, when uh, Mickey told me I, I, I was playing, I think against West Indies. Sorry, I'm not. I'm just talking now. I'm not going through. I'm not reading my my affidavit. I'm yeah. just yeah. There was a there was an incident where where Justin Kemp didn't score runs, and. Uh, and Mickey told me, like, listen, what you play against the West Indies? You playing? You play? I think you you play you playing against West Indies then uh, in Justin Kemp's place. And I was so excited that uh, I'll be playing in a World Cup match and all that because I've, we we've worked so hard, man. Especially I'm talking on the behalf of now the black players. We worked so hard. We put everything in. We. We we're actually ready. We we're just waiting for that opportunity, that breakthrough, to play. And uh, I was so excited that I'm playing the next day. That I mean, the, the following day. And during our net, our, our 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 practice session, we had a net. While I was betting, while I was betting, Mickey, Graham, and Pouch uh, were standing next to the net. Now. But now I could see, man, I'm betting there, but now they're pointing at me. Like they're talking there, I could see, no, man, these guys are talking about me. I'm, I can't focus here. Mm. And then Boucher, Boucher came into the net. Now I'm, I'm asking myself, why is he coming to my net while I'm betting? Mm. Then, he, then he told me, listen, this is how you play your off spinner. Then I told him, what do you mean this? Oh, I know how to play off spinner. So what are you trying to prove? I didn't what get are you that. doing? You said this is how we play what? Off spin. Oh, off spin. spin. Okay. Off spin ball. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, off spin ball, yes. Yes. Then I asked him, what, what, are you, what are you trying to prove? Because I can play off spin ball. How can I be here and not be <laughs> able, able to play off spin? Mm. Yeah, I mean... What are you trying to achieve? And he said, "Yeah, but you could see, yeah, he's not happy, man. He's not. He's just not happy that I'm, 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 I'm playing the next day." And at that time, while he was talking to me, I just felt like I can just throw that bet on his face. And uh, but, but then I just <laughs> thought, "Listen, man, just let let it slide. Just let it slide. Carry on with your, with your, with with your work." And. Uh, then he came out of the net. He went, he walked back to Mickey and uh, and Graham again. But then they kept, kept talking, man. They kept talking. Like you could see, like these guys are very unhappy that I'm playing tomorrow. But I couldn't understand. Mickey told me I'm playing tomorrow, but he was also not happy that I'm I'm not playing. He was not happy that I'm playing because I could see the manner they were all talking. Mm -hmm. That these guys don't want me to play and. Uh, and Mr. By, 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 by luck, it, it happened that I must play the next the next day against the West Indies, where uh, 
where I play. And uh, what happened is that uh, the day of the game, the day of the game, I was told to to pair up. I'll be betting at number three. That game, I think Herschel Gibbs and uh, Smith opened the betting. And I was told to pair up, I'll be betting at number three, and uh, and then Carlos, Carlos, Jack Carlos will go four. And then when the wicket fell, then they told me, no, you're not going, Carlos will go. Okay, it's fine, Carlos will go. Then the wicket fell, they, they sent someone else to go and bet. Mm. Just like, the, until I... <laughs> And until and, until I did I didn't even bet until it was it was Polo Polo was betting at seven at seven and uh, and I ended up not betting mm. and these guys when this happens they just tell you no you're not going uh, this guy is going you're not going and I just. I just felt like I could I could just take off my pads the the pads I, I had on and just put them there and just said because clearly it doesn't look like I'm going to take part in this match because I'm a top order batsman I, I was picked mm. to, number to, three to, to, to bat in the top yeah. order mm. and uh, and then the game ended I ended up not batting and the next game. And no one explained, and Mickey didn't explain anything to me. He didn't even tell me, listen, yeah, this and this. Uh, you, know, you know, I could have understood if he came to me and just come with an excuse or just at least talk to me, or even if you just bullshit talk as always, sorry, with my language. <laughs> just tell me something. But, uh, but he didn't. So, so then we moved on. We, we, we I just, I, I just left it, and uh, and the next game I didn't play. I was dropped. Then I asked, how can I be dropped? I did nothing. You didn't allow me to bet. You didn't give me a chance. But you picked me, and when I was supposed to bet, you keep on shifting me down the order, shifting me down the order. What's happening here? And. Then the situation of Roger also came in with Makaya and when Makaya played and and um, when it got heated in the team meeting with Roger and uh, and Mickey Arthur the coach, it, that environment was just it was just bad. Those guys you could see that these guys don't want us. They they don't want us to play, and you just you could they just couldn't hide it. The guys just couldn't hide. It was so bad. It was, it was, it was a, just it was just painful to be there. And there, there was no chance that we were gonna we we're going to win that World Cup with that uh, environment. There was no chance. Mm. Can you before you go to the next point, your part, your affidavit? Mm. If you go okay. to page five, I just want to to correct something there. Because it's, you see in the middle of that paragraph 11. Yes. There's somewhere where you say, I could tell. I think it's line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm. 9, 11. Yeah. I could tell that a lot of senior players, We're such as sure. Graham Smith, Mark Boucher, were happy. But what you have just told us now is that no. they were not happy. No, no, no. Happy. I think there was a mistake. It was Thank supposed you. to be okay. they were not happy. OK. So I want it to be on record so mm. that whoever gets this affidavit should not yes. question you. Yeah, OK. Yes, they were not, they were not happy with the, they were not happy with the decision that I was playing. Because yeah. you need to remember, uh, Justin Kemp was their, their friend. Those guys were. Those guys were a pack. So for for me to play in Justin Kemp's place, it was just a, to them it was just wrong, wrong. It was just wrong to them. So, so they couldn't hide it that they didn't want me mm. to play. 
They just couldn't hide it. Or, or the day before and the day of the game, they just couldn't hide it. Mm. Mr. Bosman, they do just you still... Hide it and, 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 uh, and, uh, when you do drinks also, do you understand, there was an occasion where I was, I was 12 men, uh, as usual. I was part of the guys carrying drinks, and you, you, you literally can't look that way. There was a time when I slightly, I would look that way, but I couldn't see someone who wanted something. And, and these guys would shout and say, come, wake up, fucking wake up. Quickly, come, 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 stop sleeping. Do you understand? So just the language, and it, it, was, it was just a normal thing. And, and it, 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 was, it, it, was, it was said that uh, even with management, with a coach, assistant coach, those guys, could, they could hear that. They could hear that, uh, no man, you can't talk to a guy like that. But to them, it was just normal. You know, like that thing of like, come, fucking wake up. Uh, the, the, uh, the batsman is looking for something there. So that environment was just unpleasant. It was just, um, it was just like you do not need it. You don't belong there. Mr. Postman, do you still remember who who the black players were um, who, that were part of the 2010 team? Yes, it was it was myself, Makaya. Makaya, Roger Tilly Marcus, Ashwell Prince, Robin Peterson, Marshall Gibbs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. There's a part, um, you know, on paragraph 11, where you talk about the media, and um, and I'll and I'll read it. You say that the white media labeled black players as passengers. Can you can you just yes. elaborate on that? Mm. Yeah, it, it was it was massive. There was even an article about it in the in the media that uh, that we are passengers. It was all over, and it, it was said, man. It was said that you go into a World Cup and you've been called a passenger, and it it was said. It, it wasn't even a. It was something that was there. Mm. That we are called passengers. A lot of um, people that have testified b before us have testified on the role of, of the media in the sport and have stated that uh, the media is, of course, an important stakeholder in the, in the sport. I wanted to know from you, do you think that the media plays a part in the division that exists in the sport? Yes, obviously. Obviously, because most of the time, you see the speculation. When there's a, a team or a, a touring team that's about to be picked, then these guys will pick their team. They will pick their team, and and most of the time they'll be correct. And on these occasions with the World Cup team, they were not correct because one of their favorite bowlers didn't. I don't think Dale Smith made that team. Because they, they got that they're very they very very upset that they uh, they uh, they'll, not they'll they'll stay in, <laughs> excuse me they'll stay in didn't 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 make it and uh, yeah it, media plays a massive role it, it plays a massive role whereby when there's a speculation you just know that that will be the team because these guys have, have the inside info they speak to the, to the to, 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 to the selectors, they speak to the coaches. They, they have a good relationship with the cap. Excuse me, with the captains and uh, and he just said he just said. But not only do they play a major role, it would seem that they play a role in a, making sure that black players feel un, unwelcomed and also making them feel like they don't deserve to be part of the cricket. Yes, 
the same as the as the as the protease setup. Mm. It's the same white media protease setup. Same same basket. Mm. So you just they just make you feel you're not wanted. Mm. All you need to do is to make sure that those gaps are ready. The, the water is ready, the power rate is ready, whatever that you have to do in terms of carrying drinks. And the worst part, the, the worst part is that during sessions, we're all doing the same thing. We, we're practicing, we're running around. Even after every game, all the guys who are not playing would, uh, would go and do shuttles, you know, run and uh, go to nets, do some extra work. It's not like we're just there to, to sit and or, or bake eggs or something. We we did everything that they did. I mean, we we had sessions together, and uh, but according to them, we don't, we don't we don't deserve to play. We don't deserve to be there. So so just the whole. The, you could see during the World Cups, there was no way that we will win a World Cup. There was no chance. Even us getting knocked out in the semi-finals, there was no chance because the, the team was just divided. You go to camps whereby you you buy into one thing. You, guys talk well. They talk good that they are this and this. This this is now what we're going to fight for. The pro tiers. The this you go to where you're going to buy into one thing and. Then you deal with the same person who's uh, who treats you like like you don't you don't exist. Then how are you going to win the World Cup if you don't pack the guy next to you, your fellow teammate? You know what I find it strange about this twelfth man mm. thing is the following: you are being excluded from playing. You are not fielded. You don't play. But over and above that. They add salt on the wound. Now you must be treated by these very players who are playing there, calling you names. You must run around. Why is that not being done by someone else? Why is there no person who's being employed mm. to carry this water? Well, because you, you, you're part of the 15, you're part of the 13 that are. That, uh, 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 you part of a squad, so someone from the squad has to do to do, do, do the. Uh, but why? But why? why does That's it have question. to be from the yeah. squad? Yeah, because because you you part of you part of the team, so the, all, all the guys who are not playing must run around carry things. <laughs> so, unfortunately, fortunately, most of the time it's it's us, mm. the black players. Who must carry those drinks and wear those bibs and run around? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bosman, do, do you appreciate the the question that yeah. Mr. July is asking? So he's he doesn't dispute the fact that it's it's someone that's in the squad. It's a player that's in the squad that must carry these drinks and run around for the players that are you know playing. Mm. But he's asking. Shouldn't there be someone designated for that purpose? Shouldn't there be a, like a staff member? Who's not a player, who's not a, a batsman, who's no. not a bowler, who's not a wicket keeper? No. Somebody who's. America. Yeah, but the, the, the management is not allowed to go on the field. It's only maybe a physio, if there's an injury on the field, then he's allowed to do that. But not not management. It has to be the players who are not playing, or can be a player who's not playing. But most of the time, the guys who are not playing has to be the ones who who are run, doing the running around or carrying drinks. It's, it's just what that is. it's just one of those things. In your observation, was that the same thing with, for instance, teams from New Zealand? The West Indies, um, Australia, yeah. do they also have people who are just running around, fetching drinks yeah, and, yeah. and collecting, yeah. 
Yes, sir. It, it's the same all over around, but the treatment is not the same. Mm. Yeah, okay. The treatment is not the same. It, it's the same all over, but the treatment is not the same. The environment is not the same. That's a problem. How is the treatment? Those teams, when you could, the, the other teams, you can see, man, when that other boy or whoever is running on the field, he's happy. He's happy to do it. Mm. He's, he's wanted in the team. You can, but you, that's all. When you make the team, that's all that you're going to do is carry those dreams. Not, you'll be lucky to play. You know, I mean, what puzzles me is yeah. what you said earlier. You are in the betting order number four, but you end up running around to, to, or you end up not playing, even though in the Betting order, you are at four, very much at the top, and you just uh, get overlooked. When the next uh, batsman must come, you you know it goes to somebody whose ranking order is less than yours. Uh, I fail to understand that. I'm I'm trying by to to find a a, a rational answer to putting a person in a packing order where the person is at the top. But when the time comes for four to go on to the field of play, somehow number five goes on to the field of play. Number six, number seven. Chair, and the environment is I toxic think? to a point where you are not able to say, no, 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 but this is my turn. Why am I not going in? I, I just I fail to understand it. I mean, it's, it's a real. It's unreal. Yeah. Uh, before you respond, <laughs> before do you respond, do you think that has anything to do with the argument that you had with Mark Boucher about when he was telling you how to beat, how to hit a, a, a spin, spin ball? Mm. A spin off. To play an off spin. Yeah, mm. Yes, an off spin. Yes, because... Because they didn't want me to play. Mm. Because it was planned. They didn't want me to play. So if, if they really wanted me to play, I could have gone to number three. Okay, mm. sometimes it happens. Okay, they'll feel that, okay, the team got a good start. Let let, let, let Carlos go. Yes. But uh, until seven, mm. no ways. No, no chance. Then the next game, you tell me that I won't be playing. Then. That guy who didn't do well, that white guy who didn't do well, who didn't score runs, is playing a game. How do you justify that? Mm. It can be on the basis of form, because <laughs> if that was the basis, then the white guy should also not be playing. Exactly, exactly, Chair. Mm. Mr. Bosman, do you, do you think that there is a concerted effort within the cricketing system to sort of sabotage black batsmen? Yeah. Do, 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 uh, do you know, man, uh, there's always been this thing that we don't have black, black we, we, there's no black, black, uh, black batsmen. There are black batsmen, but they are not being used. I was there and and the, you, you're competing against the likes of Graham Smith, Carlos. All these guys who are betting in the top to, uh, in, 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 in the top order. You're competing against them. So with me, you can ask everyone at my prime with a T24 man up front. There was no way that you could leave me out. Whether you were pink or white or, or black or <laughs> there was no chance you could leave me leave me out. But now you have to find a way of getting mm. rid of me. How did so, it do what what kind of I mean how did it maybe the question I ask, what does that do to your own self esteem? your own self-confidence. 
joy breaks you. It breaks you inside. You 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 cry inside. You you you'll pull a brave face, but inside you 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 are so broken. I suppose I'm there may be feeling. times when you ask yourself, "Am I in fact not as bad as they think I am?" Maybe there's something wrong with me. But you then say, but <laughs> I'm not doing worse yeah. than anybody else. Che, there you're competing with the white players. And when you're black, you have no chance. When you're black, you're going to struggle. And I see... Uh, I still see a lot of struggle there. People are saying that there's ch just change. There's no change. There's but you no have got, we have got a black, Af we have got an African captain now, don't you? Excuse me, sir? You have an African captain now. Bavuma, is it not? <laughs> Yes, we have an African captain. On paper, it's very good. I'm, I'm happy for him. Mm -hmm. But is he really the captain? Do they really want him to be captain? It's a question. So, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. Do you think it's just cosmetic? <sighs> Probably because there is this SJN which was always a lot of him. Che, a lot happened, a lot happened with cricket South Africa. A lot happened in, in, in the protea setup. So someone will try to do something, to come up with something that will ease things. That will, there was, a, <laughs> I, I was also surprised when I saw Temba is our new captain. Yes, when I tried to say something, then I was like, I'm being anti play. Then I was like, why do you mean, are you not excited for, for Temba? I told him, I'm sure Temba was also surprised. Do you think he's I'm the sure black? He was also surprised. Could the Black Lives Matter movement have had anything to do with it? 100%. 100%. Because in a setup, the minute you say something, you get crucified. So I just felt where I am today, I've already been crucified. So why should I still beg and go and beg and to, to these guys to, to be involved in a setup? Because they already crucified me when, when I started talking. When they told the same players that, that uh, they shouldn't talk to me. That I'm too distracted. I'm too. I'm not good for the for the system for the setup. Mm. The minute you say something, the minute you stand up for for your own people, it's a problem. We have we have black coaches. We have black mm. selectors. I guess you pick you pick a a a, 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 a team of. Uh, of six black players and only two play, three, and you think you've done your job, mm. and the same faces play, and you think you've done your job, no, no ways. The, guy, the guys are protecting their jobs, Che, and it's, it's said that it's gone, it's gone to that level. Mm. The guys are protecting their jobs. If they, if they say something, they are out of there. They are out of there. They are they're not going to last. Who are you referring they're to now? To who are those people who are not going to last? The selectors. No, whoever whoever is black and uh, you're not doing what you're supposed to to, to what, what they tell you to do. Mm. Mm. Yes, some people might not agree with me, but they know for a fact what I'm talking about. We all know that you have to play along. We all know that. It's been like that. It's been like that. You have to play along. 
Mm. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes, it looks nice. We have we have black coaches. We have uh, <laughs> we have black selectors. We have black captains. Still the same. We're going through the same things every day. Franchise set up, this new structure that, this, this, even until this day, this new structure, where, where's all, where, where, where's the whole money going to? To the white players. What about the black players? If you can look at all the, all those contracts for the new for the new uh, for the new structure. Just check check who's who's getting the most money there. Mm. Just check who's getting the most money in the new structure. But now the minute you you stand up for your fellow black 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 black, black, black friend, then it's a problem. Then you'll never be involved in the setup. The minute you've been involved in the setup, then you'll get dismissed in in no time. Mm. Okay, you can now proceed to the training camp, Proteus training camp in Hermanus. Uh, the training camp. The training camp is also the, 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 the same, sir. The training camp, it was when, when, when Gary Kirsten took over as coach in, uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, I think it was in Hermanus, just outside, excuse me, just outside Cape Town. That's where I actually lost respect for La Chip because, mm. because he came in he didn't even talk to me. He spoke, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I know for a fact he spoke to almost everyone there, if not everyone. And not once did he talk to me or have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And after that, I was, I never played for South Africa again, when he took over. Why didn't he talk to you? I'm still asking myself uh, to this day, I'm still asking myself the same question. Were there no other black players there? No, there were other black players. Mm -hmm. Lonoavo was there. Lonoavo was there. And I did ask Lonoavo. He spoke to Lonoavo. Mm. He spoke to Lonoavo. He spoke to the other players. He sat down with the other players. He spoke to them. He, I, I could see I was there. I could see it. You know, when you're trying to talk to someone, then that person avoids you. And then the next minute when everything is done, you're not part of the, of the setup anymore. But you, you're at your prime. And you're at, a batsman. At, at, uh, when I'm saying at my prime, uh, 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 I'm talking about T20 now. Mm. Yeah. Then, then you just disappear, you just fall off the bus. You don't feature in any any international games anymore. And uh, and I mean there, it being a training camp, you 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 were, you were expecting to get all kinds of opportunities in terms of training, and especially. This area where black black cricketers are not, you know, and and not associated with the betting, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and I and I see that you actually you remark about it mm -hmm. that um, there you are. It's a training camp. You are known to be a batsman. And you have every, you know, chance that there is every chance that you could be an opening batsman for that matter. 
and then you are not spoken to. And the next thing is an opening batsman uh, for the T20 is Jack Callis. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> you are in a chap. You are in a chap. Uh, I don't. Until uh, uh, until this day, uh, I'm still asking myself that what, what, what did I do to deserve this? Because financially, I lost so much, mm. and and to them it's like it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's nothing. There's there's nothing wrong with it. Then at the same at the same time, you have black presidents. You have a lot of black people were involved in the in, in, in the CSA who can intervene, but they don't. They don't intervene. I mean, you can see that this is foul. Surely someone has to say something. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they inter intervene? Why would they not intervene? Is it because they want to retain their positions? Or is it because they don't know how to intervene? What do you think? No, they're protecting their, their plates, sir. They're just protecting their, their plate. So to, to, to get rid of a fellow black, black, uh, black player, it, it, it's just normal. It's just normal to them. So they, they're not bothered. You say that, you say that, I mean, in your own words, you say, Gary Kirsten, not once did he talk to me or greet me. Did you try to talk to him? Yes, you, you, that's why I said, I said earlier, do you know when someone avoids you? You go to him, then he turns like this and talk and carry on talking. Then obviously he's he just going to let it, let it go. Yeah. Let it start. Mm. You're and not going to. When you're not needed, you can see. Mm. There's people who can hide it. Their actions are just bad. You can just see. Wait, up and the, the phone, and the phone are too, too up. Sure. In his attempts to avoid you, did you ever try to. Did you ever get the opportunity, rather, to ask him why you did not make the squad? No, never, because I was, you know, when you drop, you, you don't even get that opportunity, because you see the squad and that you're not, and you, don't, you, you see that your name is not there, and, and you'll, be, you'll be lucky if they call you and tell you, listen, you're not in the squad. Normally. Normally, the convener will tell you, listen, you didn't make the team, blah, 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 blah. You won't even get to, to call um, to, to, to call Ulan Duke, whoever is the coach. Obviously, at that time, it was scary. So I, I knew for a fact, he, he, even, even there, you could see the people who were, who were uh, 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 you could see who were, who were were his favorites. So I didn't even, after that, I didn't even bother. I could see that as soon as receiver now Carlos is going to open, then I was like, okay, so this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Me as a, as, a, as a black front, front, front uh, top order batsman, I'm competing with these guys. So the problem, uh, the problem, mm -hmm. so so you, you need to get you need to get rid of the problem. Yeah. Now let's see you as a coach. coach. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> In your hometown, in your home district. In no my hometown, sir. Do you know what? This, this was a sad part now, sir. In my hometown. Mm. 
Do you know when, uh, after playing, up, whenever I come back from tour, from the Proteas, obviously you, you, you try to save the, some of the meal allowances, you get your, your salary there. The guys are expecting you. You organize tournaments. Every, every time when I came back, I organize tournaments in Kingdom. I organize tournaments and make sure that uh, I buy equipment. Mm. I make sure that the boys are sorted. And, and, and for some reason, it's just, it, 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 when you've done something, people use that thing against you in the setup, in our cricket setup. I think with me, I was, I, 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 I've been all going to crucify you with the, with, the, with the Mickey Arthur thing. Because since, since, since when, since the World Cup issue, when I, uh, when I, uh, when I said, when I told Mickey Arthur that uh, he was a liar, mm. I was crucified for that. I was made to go and apologize. Go and apologize to the man, and which I did. Sorry, I'm now jumping the ship now with the with this issues. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, no, no. I was told to apologize. I was I must go and apologize to the guy, and I did go and apologize to Mickey, just for me to get back into the setup. And then he told me straight, you 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 hurt my family. My family was very upset with what you said about about me in the, in the media, but. This chap doesn't, he doesn't care how I feel. Mm, yes. Mm. It's all, it was yeah. all about loss, him. Young and normally that I've lost so much. I've lost a lot with it, with it World Cup. And to, to him, it was nothing. It was as long as I apologize to his family. Because he said his girls were very hurt. His wife was very hurt about what I said. Maybe I should apologize to them, but it's fine. He understands. That uh, I'm apologizing now. He's happy that I came to apologize. You're apologizing for being treated badly. What in you... Yeah. Yeah. And with the Kimberley I issue now, when I was, uh, I actually, I, actually uh, I, I replaced someone who moved to another union okay. in Kimberley. As a, as a Northern Cape provincial coach. That setup was just, it, it was just bad, 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 bad. At least it wasn't toxic like the, the free state setup whereby you could see it, but it was bad. It was bad whereby there was a time when I played eight players of color. I played eight. Then I was told that I want to make this team. I want to turn this team into a into a Zimbabwe team. What was that supposed to mean? I mean, there's no way that you can play. Your team can be black, 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 black. <laughs> and I explained to them. I showed them. I showed them the stats. These are these boys' stats. This is what they did. But still, it wasn't. What's happening in South African cricket? It's very. Because our black boys are never good enough. Our black boys are never good enough. When you play them, when you go against. That thing of playing three players of, uh, if you're playing two, two uh, uh, black players and play three African uh, African or four African blacks, could you have to stick to that thing? You must, you can only play three African blacks. You can't play more than that. This Even if so called two guys, system. you can't play more than that, which is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. 
So the, your boys were all black, mm -hmm. and you are now told this is you are doing a Zimbabwe. Yeah, I'm turning the team into a Zimbabwe team. Because in Zimbabwe, they, they're all black. They, they were all black. The majority of the team was black. Mm, yeah. So what they were trying to say is that I'm turning the team into a Zimbabwe team. Which was very sad. It, it, because the, these people who are saying these things is people that I know. And, uh, and the only person who supported me with that was uh, is a currency of Eugene Jacobs. He was the only one who was supporting me and begged me, oh, besides now, my own. Was the complaint coach. against the quality of the cricket that the, that team was playing, or was it just a knee-jerk reaction to the fact that they were majority black or all black? I'm trying to find why why there's a complaint when you have got a majority black team in Kimberley. Do you know some of them? Some of them, chair, they were like, that thing can only happen in the Eastern Cape. I know. And I couldn't understand these guys. What do you mean it can only happen in the Eastern Cape? Where? Most of the uh, 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 of the team, you understand when most of the team is is black, it doesn't have to be the Eastern Cape only. If the if the guy is good enough, why not? Why not play? What did you understand them to be to to be to be mean? What were they saying when they say, "Yeah, if this was in the Eastern Cape." Because in the Eastern Cape, no. there is many. They were like, they were like, no, it, this is not the Eastern Cape. <laughs> it's like you have to play their own players, their own kind. And most of most of most of the guys that are that that are played also that are signed are signed, are signed, what five players from the Eastern Cape? Yes, we had five. We had two Akonakula. We have. Untuntuana, we have Ungam, we, we had Umkaleni, we had also Mohal. All those players deserve to play to play in the in, in the team. To mm. Akonakula, and they all deserve. And the poor CEO couldn't couldn't do anything. It was just a, it's a struggle. It's a, it's a struggle, especially for a town like Kimberley. Mm. And then if eventually I, I started getting, I started struggling mentally and physically. And then I, I, the environment was just not good. I told him straight, listen, I can't do this anymore. As soon as I left, I, 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 I resigned. Then most of the players that are, that are signed, those black players, were released from, from their contracts. Yeah. Their contracts were not renewed. Mm. When I left to set up. So what are you doing? Sorry. Before leaving, did you, did you try to take this up with CSA before you resigned? I spoke to the, to a few people at CSA. I spoke to to to, to the current uh, 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 CSA, the new CSA president, who used to be our chairman at Greek was at and at Northern Cape Cricket, and uh, and our CEO. That's why the only person who was backing me was our our, our the Northern Cape uh, Northern Cape CEO, Mr. Eugene Jacobs, and the rest were like. You are wrong. You are wrong for? Because you're not playing your, I'm not playing their kind. Mm. And it was sad for those boys because those boys, 
then to go back home. And they did nothing. They did not. They were performing. Some of them were frustrated and they were not signed. Was the was allegation? The there was, uh, sorry, there was a time where I decided uh, that uh, the convener must come and announce his team because it's not my team. Because they even limit me on picking teams. So I couldn't pick the team. Me as a coach, they didn't allow me to pick my team. So I told them, okay, come and announce your team there. Then there was a small delay on the, on the game, not on the game, on our preparation in terms of them announcing their team. Because I, then I refused to announce their team because it was their team. I told them, you guys need to come and announce your team before we start. It took 20 minutes, 20 minutes check before they came to come and announce their team. And I told my play, uh, uh, I, I told the whole team that this is a situation because I never, I never hide anything from them. I mm. told them that this is a situation and this is how we're going to go, go about it. Because whether you playing tomorrow, whether you playing today, I'm not against you, but this team wasn't picked by me. I just mm. work with you guys. They pick the team, so they must come and announce the team because I'm not going to announce the team. Mm. So when you choose these eight black players on merit, and then you leave out the white players, what is the complaint there? Is it the issue still merit, or is merit equal to color? It has to do with the color that if you are white, yeah. you definitely you, have merit. You, you, you're just playing too many black players. Uh, mm. so. You're just playing too many black players. But what about Merit? When you play too many black players in a team, it's a problem. And, it's a and problem that, when you play too many black and players. And that would be irrespective of the merit that, you know, call, that persuaded you to, to have them in the team. You selected them because of their merit, but because eight black players in a squad of 11 or 15, whatever the number is, is too much. It's, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much, and, and it's, it's not allowed, according to them. It's too much, and it's not allowed, according to them. Yeah. So what are you doing now? Now that you have resigned? Now, now I keep knocking at the door. I I spoke to to Graham. I sent him a personal message. I spoke to the guys. I spoke to all those guys at CSA. But it's a problem. Northern Cape is a problem. CSA is a problem. There's always this thing that you always have to, you have to beg. Mm. You have to beg, 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 beg. But and there's always a story that, no, we have to go through this, we have to do this, we have to go through this, we have to. Look at Roger. All those guys are international players who can add value at any level, at any level. Mm. Let's, um, I must just ask you, and I know it's different setups. Um, you're talking about um, obviously your days of coaching the, the Northern Cape Provincial team. What's interesting is how you mentioned that obviously when you selected these black players, eventually management interfered with the selection and they started selecting the team. So now I want to understand at, a, at Protea's level, if, if, if an issue such as yours where you, know, you dropped from, from the team or you're, having, or you're not being selected, who interferes there? 
No, there is a blind eye. Uh, blind eye is. There is a blind eye. Pa, when you look at your eye, they don't see it. It's a blind eye there. There is a blind eye. No one says nothing. And, and you are you on your own. There yeah. yeah, you are on your own there. There is a coach, I guess. The coaches can, can answer, can give you a better answer in terms of at that level, Proteus level, but you as a, as a, as a, as a, as a black player, you are on your own. Do you know of any white players that, that complained about selection issues that would have grievances about selection? No, I, I always hear the stories of we didn't get enough opportunities. That's why we're playing for other countries. Mm. Opportunities. There shouldn't be any white player who's, who's complaining about opportunity. There shouldn't be any white player who's complaining about opportunity. Because these guys, they get the majority of the opportunity. They've been getting it. They're still getting it. Afri Forum says differently. It says white players are leaving South Africa and go and play somewhere because of these black players who end up not being played. Yeah, that's yeah, that's just that that's it. That's it. That's very sad. Mm. Okay, you know what, 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 what says also about this whole situation, sir? It's that you'll never hear our own complaining and fighting about it, about us not playing. you just hear someone mumbling in a, in a corridor or mm. passage <laughs> that, oh, hey, you are a Janu Mangatan. Hey, hey, when um, you are a La Seta Proteas, yo. I Yakonzaga Lisa set up. Don't, 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 don't. You just hear people talk, but they did absolutely nothing. Yeah. Okay, Lutz. Can you just take us then through your concluding remarks? Because I think that's very important mm. for the chair to just hear mm. that. Yeah. In fact, I, I, just, I, I wouldn't mind if you read. You read that those concluding remarks into the record, and then you know at the end you can chat. If you read just from paragraph 18, and then thereafter you 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 you, you give the comments. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just to finish off, sir, is that uh, is that is that to, today I, I spoke. I didn't just speak for myself. I spoke for those current, for the current crop, the retired black players, not just me, mm. because we are, we are all in this. And there's a lot of current players also who can't say anything, who are scared to say, to say something. And it said, it said that, uh, that, that if they say something, they're going to be crucified. And, uh, and it's not going to change. Those poor, poor boys, who, who, the current crop, it said that uh, whenever they say something until this day that they get victimized. If you don't mind, can I read that paragraph 18 yes. into the record? Mm. You say, today I'm talking for myself. I'm, I'm not talking for myself. But on behalf of all the black cricket players, mm. both past and the present, if one looks at the current cricket team system, in my view, it still favors, trusts, and benefits white cricketers. It is easy for white former players
to get involved in the cricketing system post-retirement. This is unfortunate. No so for former black players who remain doubted in what they do. Ombudsman, you have heard them. They came before and told you their stories about a lack of a lack of opportunities post cricket playing days. I'm in the same boat. We are all suppressed and neglected. Yeah, then you can talk. Uh, no, I just want to, 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 to thank you for this opportunity, uh, Jay, and, uh, and I hope something happens. And uh, everything so far has been positive with, with, with this, uh, with this uh, inquiry and these hearings. There's been a lot of positive talk about it, and uh, I pray that something happens. Mm. We've lost a lot, a lot. We've lost. We 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 are hurting inside. Financially, we lost a lot. I hope something will be done about that, and that we see change in the coming man, my months, especially now with the with the new with this new structure. Thank you. Yes, I think as we close I cannot but read your parting shots in your affidavit. Because they say everything that I would say in closing. And I quote, it appears that black professionals in key positions at Cricket South Africa are there only to fill their scorecards. As black players during my playing days we felt that black leaders at CSA did not wield that much power to protect black players from racist exclusion in the Proteas team. I may go as far as saying that in my view, the black leaders were too weak to deal with the systemic racism within the sport, which is protected by white media. What rendered them weak was that they were merely sitting at the top of the game in boardrooms while the marginalization was happening on the ground and in the dressing room. They had no tools or grounds to disagree with what the system was giving them as reasons for our exclusion and discrimination. This makes them inadvertently complicit in the ill treatment because it happens under their watch, so to speak. As past black cricket players, our mandate is to ensure that the current players are treated with respect, integrity, and fairly across all formats and that there are no discrepancies on anomalies on salaries and selections when it comes to playing for the proteas. I don't think I could have made any improvement in concluding your testimony such as I've listened to it today. The whole question of disparities, disparities in, in salaries has been testified to by a number. And I don't 
I'm not able still to recover from, from being told by some cricketers who have already come before us that black cricketers were being paid 10 times less than their white counterparts. And um, unless, of course, you know, there is somebody who's going to come and say, no, those are inaccuracies, it still leaves a very sour taste in my mouth to hear that in a post-apartheid democratic South Africa, there could be that kind of gap in remunerations. I know you haven't talked about that, but as I say, there's enough, I mean, uh, quite a number of your colleagues have already spoken to that subject. And it is one of the considerations that you touch merely in the last paragraph of your affidavit that I've read into the record. For now, let me thank you for having taken the time and having come and to speak truth to power because it's only when people do so that will get to the bottom of things. What you have said today is a challenge to those who would want to say not everything that you have told us is true or not everything that you have told us is accurate and if they feel that way, they'd better come. But for now, what you have said synchronizes with some of the testimonies we have had in this past week and last week. But let me thank you again, because it's easy to take people's preparedness to come and air their souls, because it's airing your souls, in fact, that happens. It's easy to take those things for granted, as if people have nothing else to do but to just come here and say things which are not true. We will see what comes out of the wash. We will take into consideration the hope that you express that this has not just become a talk shop and that there will be something that will come out of the SJN project that will be positive for the sport as well as those who play it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, we have come to the end of the day and uh, just for those who are out there. Our plan is to continue with these proceedings until the 6th of August, 2021. And in the next two weeks, we are planning to hear from cricket clubs, from administrators, from the former CEO of Cricket South Africa, from AFRI Forum, from South African Cricket Association, from Cricket South Africa itself, and or various other personalities or entities. As for now, we will adjourn the proceedings till 10 a.m. on Monday morning. We are adjourned. <laughs>